Hello, I am Lord Pasta, and welcome to 2B2T Theory. 2B2T, or 2 Builders, 2 Tools, is an incredibly entertaining Minecraft server that has gone 6 years without a map reset, and also without any rules. This, in particular, makes 2B2T a very unique and interesting place on the internet. 168,000 users have logged on to this server with only them, others, and the world around them to hold them back. Can their actions in this digital space teach us more about ourselves in the real world? Well, that is the question, and I hope to give you an answer. First Amendment free speech issue. Free speech, as long as it do doesn't like harm another individual, that's the way I feel it. And while it may not cause physical harm, like a lot of people, it does like hurt them emotionally. What point is free speech, the First Amendment, more valuable than not hurting someone's feelings? Where do you think that line should be? I guess it depends on the person, like what you personally believe. Like if you're okay with like not using certain words, or if you feel infringed. I hope I do not need to explain to you what is so wrong with the idea of political correctness. But in case anyone needs an explanation, I will provide one. You see, if I went around telling you that you have to be correct regardless of how that may make you feel, as long as you believed it to be in fact correct, there would be nothing wrong with that. I would simply be encouraging people to be correct. But if I add the word political before correct, I would essentially be telling you to only be correct politically, which would as you can tell, not always be correct. In short, only correctness can be always correct. Therefore, political correctness, we can conclude, is not, by definition. However, that is not how most people see it. They view it as a form of being polite. But that begs the question, if political correctness is about being polite, then why is it called political correctness? There is clearly something political behind it. This form of political correctness which we see today is based off of the idea that people are oppressed by society and not by individuals. Thusly, proponents of this idea conclude that as reparations to these marginalized people, we should refrain from using certain offensive language. The problem with this is that the proponents of it begin applying it in all and any forms of life. Video games, entertainment, just regular social interactions, they apply it everywhere. And everywhere you go, wherever you address anyone, even if you make a joke, the rules of political correctness are still supposed to apply somehow. Because if person A says something oppressive, it's not their fault, it's society's fault. And thusly, every person who has the same status as person A is equally responsible for their actions. Unfortunately, proponents of political correctness have made their way onto the internet, the place where all stupid ideas come to die, and have begun to make preposterous claims about how the internet works. I feel like to, to really get a sense of the edgy lulls and kecks available, you have to go online. Because that is where people can be truly free to be as horrendous and despicable to one another as is possible. You can heap verbal abuse and sexual harassment on random strangers, which is not something generally considered okay in the crappy old real world. Now, you may wonder why this kind of behavior is okay on the internet. It's because it happens online, on the internet. So that means it's okay. And you should not complain about it, or someone will be like, uh-oh, someone said mean words on the internet. This is very logical. It's, it's like a lovely, logical sphere with a lovely round shape to it kind of thing. Now, if you had no clue who that was, be thankful. Trust me, you do not, I repeat, not want to. Christiosity is, as you can tell, a proponent of internet political correctness, the idea that censorship should not only take place in the real world, but in a not real world as well. To make matters worse, she does not seem to understand what the difference between reality and the internet is. This, of course, would be the fact 
that the things that occur on the internet do not affect you in the same way that they do in real life. And also the fact that using the internet is a choice. Not only that, but once you are on the internet, you, yes you are the one who chooses which conversations you would like to engage in. Contrast this with real life harassment, where you do not choose. And after she ignores all of the facts, she then goes on to complain about this defense of the internet as being circular reasoning. Yes, because you have a choice to be on the internet, a place where nothing affects you physically, you get to choose everything pretty much on the internet, or you can choose real life, where you have none of those um, freedoms, where you have none of that. You have a choice. Because you have a choice, the circular reasoning does not pertain to this situation. Once you factor in all of the above listed facts, there is no circular reasoning. Of course, and I'm sure you all wanted me to get to this, there is no place on the internet that shows the internet's willingness to be free more than 2b2t.org. The simple Minecraft server, which started from 4chan itself, the pinnacle of the internet culture, if you will. On 2b2t, you are allowed to say whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want. And that's the way it should be, at least in places where people agree to have that be the way that it should be. So you see, on the internet, people have a choice to play on 2b2t or not. They have a choice to go onto 4chan or not. They have a choice whether to click on the link, and they have a choice whether to click on the X in the corner. And fundamentally, if they choose one way or the other, I don't think that they should be blaming people for saying things in these areas in which they have agreed that saying these things are okay. You see, on, in real life, if an individual comes up to you and says something offensive, you did not choose to hear that offensive thing. There's a fundamental difference here. On the internet, you choose to turn on that computer, and you choose to open up your web browser, and you choose to go to that website, which might contain naughty words, ooh. And you cannot blame those people for saying those things, for it is you who has chosen, you, the individual, has chosen to go to that website. You didn't have to open up the web page. You didn't have to get a computer. You could have gone to a different website. There are many family-friendly websites on the internet. And you see, people on 2B2T understand this. And that is why most of them, all of them, are pretty much universally opposed to political correctness. I don't know if any of anyone that would be, to be honest. And with great reasoning. Anyways, guys, this is one of the things that I really appreciate about 2B2T. You know, it's something to respect about it, and I think that you can appreciate it as well. And that's why I kind of made this little episode right here. Um, this episode doesn't really tie in with any particular functionings of 2B2T, rather than it itself, as it itself is the antithesis, the opposite, if you will, of social justice and political correctness itself, as 2B2T is online and it is absolutely free. But regardless, I'm going to cease rambling and leave you all to enjoy the rest of your day. I've been Lord Pasta, and goodbye. Lord Pasta out.